G'day guys, I'm here backstage at I Am Pass, I'll show you true colours with the owner of HSU, Pete, who's here to provide a bit of an insight into what's been going on in the festival scene in Australia, particularly not just for the Australian viewers, but for the overseas viewers as well. It'd be great to just know a little bit about yourself and also how you think the festival scene has changed in Australia in the past sort of 18 months. Okay, so I started uh, going to raves, they were called back in the day. These days, that is really called raves. Um, I was 16, I used to go to all the powerhouse parties. Uh, I started promoting in clubs, was a DJ, all that kind of stuff. So, it's kind of an organic upbringing. And then started HSU actually 10 years ago this October. So, it's been a bit of a journey. Congratulations. That's I know, awesome. right? So, yeah. we started in clubs and uh, worked our way all from just the most organic process ever to where we are now. I remember that, man. Like, I was in Civic Underground with Chain Reaction. I was a great party. There might, must have been like 100 people at this party. It was like an intimate show back in the days. Raw was even, you know, being on main stage back then too. It was good. It was great. Oh, to be honest, I missed that style of Raw. Bring me yeah. back the old Chain Reaction digital punk. But anyway, that aside, um, so you've come a long way promoting the festival scene. Um, obviously, there's been heavily publicised changes to festival regulations and legislation, particularly in Sydney, New South Wales. Yeah. Um, how has that impacted your business and impacted the scene? I think it's, it's had a very drastic impact on the scene, especially from the media's point of view, because realistically, we have no, we don't have no position of response. The media can say, we're all this, we're all that. But in terms of like what's happened from that whole incident that last last year, we've seen a lot heavier police presence, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but new, new restrictions, tighter restrictions, but I guess from my point of view, we were already doing a lot of that already. You know, we're seeing tighter regulations with police, tighter regulations with youth and wellness health. These things aren't necessarily a bad thing, but I think, you know, we were doing what we were doing for a long time, 10 years, right? And now there's an outside force coming in and kind of leaving their two cents and everything. And it's merely them trying to understand what we do and what the processes are. And also, I think, you know, for the, for the, for the dance scene, the hard dance scene in general, there's a lot of, uh, I think, um, Pigeonholing of who we are. Because we're really like we're just we're really a happy bunch of people that want to come and enjoy music with our friends. We're not this kind of like crazy drug taking kind of rhetoric that they spin out in the media. So you know it's been a rough ride, but the scene's still alive. So people shouldn't worry about death fun and all that kind of stuff going because you know there was a huge blow, but they'll come back hopefully. So I hope so. Yeah. Honestly, I, I really resonate with that point you brought up about the kind of stigma attached to people who attend these kind of events, and that's definitely something in my experience I've, I've seen as well where you can't really paint all of us with the same brush at all. Everyone comes from different walks of life. Everyone's always super friendly and welcoming. And back from my first DEF CON that I attended um, back in 2012, and I, I went literally alone um, as a single kind of 19-year-old raver, not knowing what to expect, um, and I've fallen in love with the scene ever since. So the, the thing for me is, I've been going to parties since I was 16, 32 now. So it's the don't one look a day over 21, mate. My club ten. So. <laughs> The good thing is, is that the scene here is about freedoms, and I think, you know, with, the, with all the policing and stuff, those freedoms have come, in a way, a bit scrutinised, a bit under jeopardy. But it's just about evolving, and I think that's the hardest thing. Like, even with no masks for us and all these other new rules, at the end of the day, the bottom line is it's about safety. And you know, the fact that we've lost DEFCON and that we've possibly not lost Knockout for now. It's, I think it's a short term thing guys, I don't think anyone should be too worried, I think the parties can come back. It'll just take some time for the government to work well with promoters, because you've got to understand, at the beginning the government thought we were all crazy, bush no rules kind of guys, they've come in and seen that we are actually doing the proper thing. So it's just taking time, I mean we're able to do a great event this week tonight. Um, has been a fantastic event And so the far. difference between, say, Knockout and the police presence through HRD onto Midnight Mafia, onto uh, Show You True Colors. It's been a real, like, much, much better. You know, even though new rules have come in, and Mafia saw a 50% reduction in drug related instances. So people are listening to the messages. So I think people are trying to, you know, trying to take what we're saying, what, what the media is, Minister of Health is saying, and trying to, you know, come to these events and make smarter decisions. You know, we can't control what people do. That's the hard thing. And we make it the safest environment possible. We need insulin, chippy tooth. Or if you run into issues with illegal substances, which you shouldn't do, it's like possible here, you know. So you are in safe hands here than say at a house park, you know. So that's that's the thing I think the media was missing in the beginning, but they're getting better, getting better with digital health, and the scene is still very much alive. So there's more stuff coming. So that's that's great to hear. That warms my heart knowing that the void that's been left by some of these um, favourite festivals of ours and the scenes for many years uh, could possibly be filled with some new festivals, some new memories to be made. So that's really exciting actually. And I also really agree with your point that 
we've got to also evolve as a scene, sure. adapt to these changes, yeah. become more aware, more educated, yeah. um, and just generally practice these safer behaviours. So I guess, is there any kind of advice that you can give to the regular festival punter, the regular party goer, um, to think, try and get these safer? I think it's like, we're doing the best we can on our end. It's up to you as an individual to make a smart decision. You know? So, but I think like just you know look after your mates. You know, don't do stupid things and drugs. It's not worth it. And just make smart decisions in general because that's we've got. If something happens to you, regardless of anything, even a snake bite, we've got you covered. You know what I mean? But ultimately, you are responsible for your own self and you know responsible in a way for how the scene's going right now. So I think it's better to make smarter choices and just avoid drugs if you can. You know? So. Are there any kind of final words that you would like to leave us with? Uh, messages of hope, messages? Um... I think, I think guys, like, it's been a very difficult time, especially for us, and as you were saying before, being tight passed by the media. Stick with your guns, right? Make smart sources, and there's lots coming up. We're doing our first outdoor festival coming up, which is three stages, which is great. Uh, we've got three and more shows coming. We've got another single show here coming. So, the scene's not over. It's just, it's best off to go, fuck you, fuck you, you know, premium, fuck you, this. Just, you know, evolve. We have to evolve, and that's the best way possible. So I guess overarching kind of takeaways from this, guys. Uh, the promoters are on our side. We've got to back them up. Um, and it's basically moving forward together, collaborating and making the scene as safe and as fun as possible for everyone. Because it's doable, and it, it's honestly, it's on us as individuals, and it's also um, on us as a collective. So do everything you can to help each other out. Um, and just generally like rave to the great style, that's what it's all about. There's nothing better than this scene. You know, there's, there's, even tonight, like, I've been doing it for 10 years, I get goosebumps, you know, because people are happy and screaming and shouting, everyone loves the music, and I don't want that to go away, so I'm fighting for you, you've got to fight for me in a weird way, so it's just, I know that everyone does, but just, yeah, I think moving forward, make smart choices and keep supporting the scene and just, you know, evolve. We're going to get through this crazy period, I know we will, and it's just time will heal our wounds and we'll be back on track with no Amazing. Thank you very much for all your insights. Thanks, Steve. Love your videos, huh? Oh, this guy's put me on to fucking Sefa. <laughs> oh, no way. Are you, are you saying that I had some small influence in bringing Sefa to he Australia? He had a small influence. It was a, uh, um, what was their LSD song? Oh, my God. He had an LSD video, problem. Like, yeah, three years ago. I was like, I'm hooked. Do you think you need help with your LSD problem? <laughs>